Okay, so even though I'm on a YouTube hiatus, I wanted to speak on this because this is such an important moment for me. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me be the first to say to happy 10 years to Five Nights at Freddy's. We are, yes, at here at 10 years of Five Nights at Freddy's, which is crazy to think about this. This was such a popular game back when I was younger, and it's still pretty popular to this day. Even if it's not as popular as it used to be. What started off as Scott Cawthon trying to make a little extra cash turned into one of the most widely known video games ever. And even to this day, still has a strong fan base. I remember when I was first introduced to Five Nights at Freddy's. I was in fourth grade and there was this kid named Dane. And Dane was a big fan of Five Nights at Freddy's. He would talk about it all the time with his friends and other classmates and even the teacher at times. One standout moment, however, was when we were in a music class. The teacher would sometimes let us put on music to listen to and Dane went up and requested a song. And it was a Five Nights at Freddy's song. Oh man, and I still remember that. And People were so annoyed by it. Thanks, Dane. <laughs> he moved away a few years back when I was like in 7th grade, but I still hope he's doing pretty well. Anyways, after that, I eventually did look up Finance of Freddy's. I was on my home computer, like the, the family computer, and I saw a video from Markiplier that appeared in my recommendations. So I clicked on it, and it was this video in particular, and I watched it. And after that... I was hooked. It was so funny just watching Markiplier die over and over and over again. <laughs> I was surprised by the gameplay because I was expecting it to be free roam instead of sit and survive. Regardless, the gameplay was kind of unique and at the time we didn't know a whole lot about the lore so it was a huge experience. And even then, the lore nowadays is still not known completely because there's still a lot of things that need to be ironed out or looked at. The games are still pretty fun even after all these years, and even though some people feel like the games have lost its charm and charisma, I would say that the newer games still do have a lot of charm and charisma, even if you don't want to say it's the same charisma the games had back in the old days. The games are still fun and memorable, even Security Breach which on release had a lot of bugs and glitches and the gameplay was still kind of odd to most people. Doesn't help that the game just kind of felt like an additional game that felt unneeded or non-canon to the story of Five Nights at Freddy's, so there's that as well. The lore is also pretty insane for Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, even to this day, like I said, Scott Cawthon is still adding to the lore. And again, if you think that's smart or not, it is continuing the games and giving us amazing experiences to this day. And, well, as long as it's not, you know, heavily contradicting the lore, I mean, slight contradictions are already annoying, but heavy contradictions would be even more annoying. Like, the idea that William Afton has always been the killer, but then all of a sudden there's this new killer that apparently is much more dangerous than William Afton. That would be annoying. The game still has a very strong fan base, even after all these years. I remember as a kid, though, a lot of the crazy things I would see, like, I mean, I remember a lot of the shipping and stuff, you know, shipping killer animatronic robots, like Freddy x Chica, Chica x Foxy, Freddy x Bonnie, all that fun stuff. God, remember when people thought Bonnie was a girl? Ugh, good times, good times. Weird times, but good times. One thing I do remember as well was this series of videos by a guy called by the name of Dr. Creepypasta who made real life Five Nights at Freddy's animatronics. However, unfortunately he is no longer active on his channel, but I still hope he is doing well. These things were insane at the time, and the thing is, this was only like not even a year after Five Nights at Freddy's was first released. Last I checked, this was released in the spring of 2015. That's not even a year after Five Nights at Freddy's first release, and somebody already made a fully functioning animatronic of the main character. Actually, of all the main characters, even Springtrap. And to, like, ten-year-old me, that was the coolest thing ever. 
It was so insane seeing all those animatronics being actually real things. And I remember when I thought Finance at Freddy's was a real, like, animatronic restaurant, or a real restaurant that existed. Or, like, all those hoaxes that people would make. Like, that, like this one famous hoax that showed a pizzeria with Freddy Fazbear's pizza that was eventually debunked as fake. I also remember how uh, there was this show on the kids' TV network called Sprout where there, the main character's name was Chica, and she was a chicken as well. And again, this was before Finance at Freddy's. And I remember thinking to myself, did Scott Coffin base his character off of that character? Probably not, but it would be a fun coincidence if he did. It's crazy to think about how different the games are nowadays compared to what they are, or what they were back when the games first released. And, you know, they're not bad differences. You know, there's a lot of, like, really cool, like, quality of life changes. Like how there's a lot more voice acting now rather than just the phone call. And, you know, in the first Final Fantasy Freddy's game, how Freddy would laugh when he moves. And, again, whether you think him adding more and more games to this series is good or not, it does produce more of these kind of quality of life changes that are really smart and, again produces these epic experiences for us to enjoy because again it is it is just a game a complex lore game but a game regardless i mean i do feel like uh, ultimate custom night should have been where the game series ended but even then like i said a lot of the games are still pretty good though i do feel like they do like the original charisma that the first seven games had and i say seven games because i'm talking finance of freddy's one all the way up until ultimate custom night those to me are the true series in my eyes i still love the other games but those that is the true series to me most people feel like scott coffin is milking the franchise at this point and i don't really agree now he could be but one thing i do remember from scott coffin was an interview he did with Daco. And in that interview, he talked about how he doesn't want to take his fans for granted. You know, that's probably the, the least valuable game I've ever made as far as profit is concerned. Mm -hmm. But it's also the single most valuable game yeah. out of the entire franchise. And the reason is because what I learned from FNAF World is what is driving every single project going on right now. It, it, is, it is serving as, as the gemstone of quality control in my mind, and it has solidified exactly what I have to do going forward. If, if I was treating the movie as I was treating my game series at the time I made FNAF World, mm -hmm. we would be three movies in to the, to the FNAF movies by now. Yeah. And they would probably, probably be terrible. <laughs> you know, if, if I if, if I had the mindset that oh hey it, it it's fine right the praise people will love it you know regardless of of, of quality mm -hmm. then we would we would already have several movies and they would all be terrible I mean I you know and and this you know ultimate custom night would have come out way too soon and it just served as a really important lesson for me that you should never take it, it, it taught me to never take for granted yeah how special it is to have a group of people who are eager to play what you make. Whenever I made the, you know, I'll, I'll use the Desolate Hope as my example again. I saw one one person made a piece of fan art of that on the internet. I found mm -hmm. it on Google. So I'm going to draw one of the characters and that was the most special thing to me yeah. in the world that someone had drawn a picture of one of my characters. Like, I yeah. can't even tell you how important seeing that one drawing was. And it was just, you know, I, I have no idea who it was. I mean, don't get me wrong, Fun It's a Freddy's World is still really fun, even after all these years. I mean, I'm playing it for the background footage for obvious reasons. But I do understand what he's getting at. It's like, you had this lore and you're still trying to expand upon it, and yet you chose to make a silly little RPG game instead of continuing on with the story. Now, I'm not bashing on Scott Cawthon, I just wanted to bring that up, obviously. This game series also introduced me to several different YouTubers who I have come to really enjoy a lot. The major one, of course, being Markiplier, who I brought up earlier. Like, that was the very first Markiplier video I ever watched. And after that, I was hooked. I loved Markiplier. Well, I still do, but I love watching Markiplier's videos, and I loved his Finance of Freddy's videos when he first made them. It was always so funny to watch how scared Mark was compared to now, where he's more just kind of like making jokes about the situation. And it's always kind of funny to look back on that and think about that's how he used to act when he was the. Hey, look at you! 
Yes! Mother of God! I am the king of Five Nights at Freddy! <laughs> I had to. Some two YouTubers even got their career started on Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, a, a very famous case would be Daco, who apparently quit uh, college to pursue making Five Nights at Freddy's videos, or, making, or at least making a career out of YouTube in general. And that was always kind of insane to think about. Because, you know, I mean, I feel like dropping a college degree might be a little bit much in my eyes because you know that's thousands of dollars you basically threw away for you know playing video games for a living nonetheless he is doing pretty well for after all these years for making video i don't know why i'm saying that like it's a bad thing i mean i do enjoy his content so i don't know why i'm insulting Daco. i'm not insulting Daco. i actually really do like Daco watching his videos and stuff like that but it is pretty cool to think about it that that's how he got started because of scott coffin I mean, Daco based most of his channel around Five Nights at Freddy's, even though he does cover a lot of other different games. But Five Nights at Freddy's will always hold a special place in his heart. I mean, I remember when he was playing Five Nights at Freddy's World while in the hospital. For the love of all things holy in this world. I mean, it doesn't get more dedicated than that. That was actually kind of insane to think about. So, I guess I should really, you know, talk about Scott Cawthon, because I still have a lot of respect for Scott Cawthon after all these years. You know, for most internet personas, it's really hard to stay squeaky clean. Scott Cawthon has managed to stay really squeaky clean. I mean, unless you count the whole, like, you know, donation thing that happened in 2021, but I personally don't, because that was people going through his personal information and then doxing him, sending him death threats. From what I can remember, it's been a hot minute since I've actually revisited that controversy. But that was people going out of their way to harass them from my memory. You know, looking through his personal information. Even if you don't agree with his you know, political beliefs, I still believe that you should remain respectful. Especially knowing how kind of a person Scott Cawthon was. Or is. I don't know why I keep saying was. <laughs> But for the most part, Scott Cawthon has stayed true to himself, you know, he stayed true to himself, his family, his fans, God, because he is a Christian, so I might as well include that. He stayed true to himself, and I respect that wholly, and has managed to keep a good status on the internet, except for, of course, people who hate his video games because of, you know, childish fans, so that's fun. One stick-out moment I remember was on a charity stream that Daco did years back and it was for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Now if you don't know what St. Jude's Children's Hospital is, well it's quite self-explanatory. It's a children's hospital for kids who are terminally sick. I mean these are kids with cancer who probably have like less than two years to live and it's a horrible horrible thing to watch these kids deal with these sicknesses. It's horrible. But most people were donating relatively small amounts of money. I mean, any donation counts. It's it's the it's the thought that counts. But Scott Coffin came on that stream and donated a whopping 1k to Daco for this, you know, event. 1k to the children's hospital. You might like he's a busy guy, you know. He's a busy guy. <laughs> I don't know what to say. What what do I say? Is that legit? Is that is that real? And that blew me away. I mean, it still blows me away thinking about it, even though 1K really isn't that much money in the grand scheme of things. But... To me, that was such a kind-hearted thing for him to do, donating that large sum of money to the chil children who desperately need it so that they can get treated for their sicknesses and hopefully live to see another day. Because it's a horrible thing when you're a parent and you find out your kid probably has less than four years to live. It's supposed to be you live past your parents, not your parents live past you. And that's a horrible thing to go through. And it still melts my heart to this day to think about said incident. Especially since my grandma really loved St. Jude's. 
I mean, uh, I believe she donated money very often before she passed away. So it melted my heart to see Scott Cawthon give that much money to those people. So that was a very touching moment I wanted to share, share to you. Sorry, my, my recording kind of cut out for a second. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. And I want to thank Scott Cawthon from the bottom of my heart for giving us such an incredible fan series. Or such an incredible series that has changed the lives of many, it seems. You know, and one more thing, I forgot to mention this. All the fan games. Every single one of them. I mean, you can go back and look at my older videos. I played a few different Final Fantasy fan games, but there were so many back in the days. I mean, especially between like 20, 2014 to 2017, maybe 2018. There were so many Final Fantasy fan games. And it slowed down quite a lot, but there's still some fan games as far as I'm aware of it. And that's another thing. It shows the impact that this game series had, that it caused thousands upon thousands of people to make their own fan games. Alright, now that I've kind of, you know, artificially thrown that in there into this very artificial script, like I said, I wanted to thank Scott Cawthon from the bottom of my heart for creating this amazing series and this incredible lore, changing the lives of many, it seems, getting a lot of careers started, making all these big YouTubers have even more subscribers and views. It's incredible to think about it. So like I said, happy 10 years to Five Nights at Freddy's, and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you.